Hi, this is Jordan here with another video and we are now one month after launch and Diablo 4 has announced its new season one, the season of the malignant. I think it was as a lot of people were expecting. I'm a little underwhelmed because I did have a little bit high expectations due to Blizzard having a larger studio and like more employees, etc. and bigger budget than Path of Exile. So I was expecting more endgame content, but I'm gonna be going over everything in this. It still is a lot of really cool stuff, but yeah, let's go over everything together. Season 1 of Diablo 4 comes with a new progression and gameplay mechanic, Malignant Hearts, and it's basically like elites have a chance to be malignant, and uh, you unlock these with a new NPC. They're a little bit like a combination of Metamorph slash Arch Nemesis from Path of Exile, where there'll be like these like slightly more powerful monsters, you'll fight them, you capture the hearts, put them in a cage of binding, and then you revive the monster into a more powerful version. And after killing the most powerful version, you do get the Malignant Heart that you can socket in. Well, there are different spots depending on what you wanted to do. Um, and this will be instead of gems. So that means that there will be some sort of choice. But depending on how powerful these are, it might not be that much of a choice. Because they just might be that much more powerful than gems that they eradicate gems in some spots. Uh, but we'll see. Either way, they Blizzard have said that... Seasons will be something that's most likely not going core necessarily. They won't necessarily become part of the main game. So in season two, even if these completely replace gems for one season, they might never be a part of the game again. And Malignant Hearts come from the new type of dungeons, Malignant Dungeons. There's also a new boss added to the game, Varshan the Consumed, but it is not confirmed to be a pinnacle boss the size of Lilith. That is the number one disappointment for me because where Diablo 4 is lacking right now is endgame content for no lifers. I've said time and time again that it's an amazing game right now for casual players, right? Because in your first 50 to 100 hours, the game is really great, but past 100 hours, it gets very stale and lacking. Um, and we're seeing even the popular opinion on Reddit now, uh, there's even a post as I'm speaking right now on Reddit saying, weren't all the um, game reviewers saying Diablo 4 had a perfect endgame? What were they talking about? And generally, they are talking about what's after the campaign as the end game, right? Diablo 4 is a little different than other ARPGs. Like, there are others where you start the game when you're close to max level, right? A lot of people will consider Path of Exile you start when you're a little 90 or 95. Whereas Diablo 4, you start after the campaign. Or if you are, um, if you're skipping the campaign, you're basically doing... The same or very similar content at level 2 that you are doing at level 98 and that does get scale, stale for a lot of people that are um, playing so many hours, right? So this is literally a bit of a problem of playing the game to death but it does come a lot earlier than a lot of games. So that was the number one thing. I really do hope that Varshan somehow is like really really hard. Um, what I was hoping and expecting was that they would turn in Dariel, Duriel and the... I was about to say Triceratops. The um, Cerberus boss, whatever his name is, something on A, uh, that they would turn those into pinnacle bosses because they actually have pretty okay moves for a pinnacle boss. The number one thing, and Blizzard's really good at this, is just overtuning the damage makes a boss super hard. Lilith doesn't have the craziest moves, right? If they didn't one hit you, if they only did half of your health, it wouldn't be a hard fight, but it does. And so it is a hard fight. And, and Dario's chain mechanics and some of her other moves and maybe give her some ranged attacks. Now you have a really cool pinnacle boss fight. You can make it super overtuned and you have the power to do this easily, even with hardcore in mind, because of Cheat Death Elixir. It's the only upside and, in my opinion, the only place where Cheat Death Elixir should work. Number one thing I wanted to see. The, the thing that I wish wasn't the case was that Nightmare Dungeons wasn't like the only end game. Obviously, you do have Helltides, but they're not really that end gamey i'd say um that's what i want the most that's what i was hoping for the most maybe season two will give us more end game content but that being said diablo 4 is still something i'm gonna enjoy every single season it comes out it'll just be more and more the more end game comes out season journey brings new legendary aspects and other smaller rewards and it's tied through the battle pass system which will give the rewards for free and you can pay to get more cosmetic rewards so they've said time and time again that there is not going to be any pay to win in diablo 4 and if there ever will be i'll be the first person to call it out viciously and aggressively and loudly um but so far they've been true to their word the main concern I have is if any like free part of the battle pass that does have anything uh, is tied to the paid battle pass speed up. 
So like if you can pay to speed up the free battle pass, that would be pay to win. Uh, we currently just don't know enough about it for that to be the case, but I'm obviously keeping an eye out for that. Uh, and the worry here is the free battle pass does have things like XP boost, obols, etc. Um, so we'll see. Um, but I'm hoping and most likely they will just be true to their word that there will be no pay to win. The number one thing people are concerned about here is are they going to sell stash tabs, uh, which I do consider pay to win. We are getting six new unique items. I initially thought this was going to be six new unique items per class. Um, I'm hoping that's still the case. Six new items is maybe a little low if it's total. Um, because I think unique items are pretty exciting in Diablo 4. They could be a little bit more unique. But yeah, no, I, I definitely want more unique items. Now, I'll do a quick clarification for those that are new to the ARPG genre about how seasons work. There's actually been a lot of confusion about this. Um, we saw a big Twitter thread, which I thought was satire, where people were like, wait, so all my time playing has been wasted then. And well, hopefully you're enjoying playing the video game while you're playing it or all your time spent playing video games is then wasted if you don't. This is very different and jarring, especially to MMO players. They do actually have seasons in MMOs, but they're known as expansions and they feel very different for the people playing them, even though they are the same concept. All the stuff you've done so far is nullified and you basically start over again every expansion. Seasons are the same thing. Full reset instead of continuing on the character. You can make a character called the same thing and you are effectively having the same experience. Um, but yeah, seasons are basically a reset. You do have... You get your mount immediately, you still skip the campaign, uh, Altar of Liliths are unlocked immediately, and all the exploration you have unlocked immediately, as long as you have a, a live character to log into um, two days before the league. Well, you can log in at any time, but you, they will let you log in two days early. And yeah, all the areas you discover and the XP for it. So you do get like 270 XP, I think it is, uh, Renown, uh, which means you do get five skill points. And this is a very standard ARPG thing, and nearly everybody that do play ARPGs really like this. Like, even in Path of Exile, we see that like, most people will stay to the leagues, and even a lot of people that like playing on Standard, or the Diablo Force version of the Eternal Realm, will end up playing for a little bit on the, uh, the, the leagues, because the first week, first two weeks, where you have that nice steady flow of progression, like you're constantly improving, there's things to look forward to, for a lot of people, that is like the most fun. So it really does make sense for this type of genre. So I would love to hear what were you guys expecting for season one? Is this, are you happy with this? Like the, for me, the number one exciting thing is more uniques and more legendary powers. That's going to be huge. Um, but I really was hoping for more of an end game thing as somebody that plays games for a lot of hours. That's obviously the number one thing to keep you enjoying it for more and have a nice end game loop there, uh, especially with an item chase, right? A nice fun item chase. Ideally, not things like Shaco because they are 500,000 hours on average. So I'm probably never going to see one in my lifetime, right? Um, but things that are chaseable and, and huntable, especially that have like a drop from bosses that you can grind, would be very fun. Like putting some items behind Lilith would be super cool. Especially because at the moment, the game ends when you hit level 100, right? Which is very different from what I'm used to, where the game starts when you come to the end game. Uh, here you're sort of you hit level 100 and there's not much to do um, There's only like sort of artificial goals that you have to set yourself like oh I want to do this just to do it and that's cool for a lot of people But I love having things like that are a bit more of an achievement uh, Whereas right now we just have Lilith. She is really hard. I've actually not been able to do her. I fucked up and died uh, So that's gonna be a goal for me in season one to do and uh, I would love more things like that I think they're really cool um I think a reason to do the Nightmare Dungeons would be cool. Like, you know, a very, like, noticeable improvement. Like, oh, dude, I'm able to do Nightmare Dungeon 90 now. Now I'm able to get this stuff, which I wasn't able to get before. That's, like, what I look for in an ARPG. Um, I'd love to hear, especially from the audience, like, what type of player are you? Like, are you a casual gamer? Are you a hardcore gamer? Are you somewhere in between? And how happy are you with this patch? Because... I've said again, like, every game doesn't have to be for everybody, and Diablo 4 isn't primarily aimed at people like me, and I think that's okay. Um, so I've still been enjoying the time I've had in Diablo 4, and I'm looking forward to Season 1 and 2. And uh, whether this becomes a game that I play for a month at a time or a few weeks at a time, I'm still going to enjoy it. That's the important part. If you're not having fun with a video game, don't play it. Either way, my name is and Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Sub if you like it, but more importantly... Try to die less than I do.